Good morning, friends, and welcome to Tuesday, August 11th. Thanks to James Montney for getting us started. Devotion is from the Upper Room Disciplines by Rachel Shurbus. Our scripture this morning is Genesis 45, 1 to 15. Then Joseph could no longer control himself before all those who stood by him. And he cried out, send everyone away from me. So no one stayed with him when Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard it, and the household of Pharaoh heard it. And Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not under answer him, so dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come closer to me. And they came closer, and he said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years. And there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth. And so to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and lord of all his house and ruler of all the lands of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me and do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen and you shall be near me to and you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks and your herds and all that you have. I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And now your eyes and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see that it is my own mouth that speaks to you. You must tell my father how greatly I am honored in Egypt and all that you have seen. Hurry and bring my father down here. And then he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept while Benjamin wept upon his neck. And they kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So I won't have to come to church Sunday. I've already heard this service. <laughs> So Joseph stands before the brothers who once drove him into exile. He not only forgives them, but he also affirms God's gracious initiative shining through their past vicious behavior. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here for God sent me here before you preserve life. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. While Joseph celebrates God's sovereignty, his brothers retain responsibility for having harmed him. Likewise, the good things that God brings about, even through the stupid, sinful things that we do, does not exempt us from personal accountability for our hurtful actions. The sure and certain grace of God is not a moral, moral loophole, but a gift that gives us courage to face ourselves and those who need us to make humble amends. Joseph's anguish surges into the present. He de needs desperately to live toward a future with his family, unencumbered by their terrible former behavior. He understands that only God can move him and his relations together in peace. In order to become whole human beings, the brothers need to face up full on the ways that they wounded Joseph. 
and then receive the love that he offers them despite their hateful history. So which one is it harder, to stand in Joseph's shoes or the brothers? To forgive the ones who sinned against you or admit you sinned against another and accept that person's forgiveness? It's unavoidable. Christian life entails both forgiving and being forgiven. Joseph's raw reckoning with his brothers shows us to ourselves as we stand before God. Until we acknowledge the depth of the meanness and the violence of what we are capable, the grace and the forgiveness of Jesus remains theoretical for us. But when God's love overcomes us, we are mended. And our relationships are restored, and we are sent out as messengers of the mercy that has saved us. Let us pray. Oh, help us come closer to knowing our need for you, O oh God. Amen. And now, our hymn is number 383. This is a day of new beginnings. is a day of new beginnings time to remember and move on time to believe what love is bringing laying to rest the pain that's gone be reconciled in all the ways that you can. In Jesus' name, amen.